Then we have what is called denial of service and distributed denial of service attacks. Now let's take each of them. So denial of service is aimed to make an endpoint or network resource unavailable. It is, it is, it is generally sourced from a single system. So the attacker is a single system. And it le is less common nowadays because this kind of attacks are no longer effective nowadays. For example, back in the days, common at such attacks were ping of death or a TCP SYN flood. So, for example, a TCP SYN flood, what it, what it would do, a ping, a ping of death, for example. So, let's, let's take both of them. So, this, uh, the denial of service attack can be aimed against, as I was saying, an endpoint or network device, for example. So, the ping of death, if you take a, again, like this is the network border. Well, this is the LAN and this is the internet. And this is your border firewall towards the internet, ASHV in here. Now this firewall, this firewall has a specific performance. Let's say the firewall can actually route and inspect at the same time back and forward 100 megs per second. But as we're going to see when we speak tomorrow about the planes of a device, which uh, any network device has three planes, control plane, management plane, and data plane. Like if you think about a switch, for example, which can switch back and forward one terabit, one terabytes per one terabit per one terabit per second, that is because it's going to do that pro that uh, that uh, packet commutation in hardware. So its line rate is hardware assisted is very fast. That's going to be the data plane of the device, which 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 uh, which is going to be the action of commuting packets between one interface to another interface. But then, if we speak about the control plane of that device, which is going to be uh, protocols like routing protocols or ARP or any kind of traffic which is destined to the device itself, then that switch can actually take no more than a couple of megs of traffic till the CPU hits 100% and the box may crash. So the ping of death, as I was saying, so this could be, so this, that firewall can support 100 megabits of traffic, of data plane traffic, so moving packets back and forth between its interfaces. But then if an attacker, so if somebody from the internet, somebody from the internet sends ping packets destined to the SA, ping packets destined to the SA. If those ping packets mean couple of megs like four to five megabits per second, that's more than enough to cause a high CPU uh, on that firewall. And when a network device, it reaches CPU level of 90 or 100 percent, it results in unexpected behavior. It can crash. It can stop offering services. Or it can, it can even, let's say, uh, stop you, you know, enforcing the policy, which means it's going to, like, for example, allow all traffic to pass back and forth. So based on the network device being attacked, when you hit a high CPU, 90 to 100%, then the result can be unexpected. But either way, one of the most important results of that attack is that when the box has high CPU, it means because of the control plane problems, it's going to also stop forwarding traffic back and forth. So data plane is capability is being blocked. So the file or the network device is no longer no being capable to route or switch traffic, user traffic back and forth. So that's a denial of service against the firewall or against the router or against the switch which is going to cause that device stop which is going to stop that device from being able to perform its services to route packets back and forth to switch packets back and forth or to control packets back and forth as the scope of the firewall that's going to be the ping up that while the tcp sin flood like if we take the same thing as the attack I'm in here, launching to test server array a huge amount of TCP sessions 
but those TCP sessions are never completed, so it only sends the send to the server. The server replies with the SYNAC, but the attacker never replies with the NAC. So it just it's just send me TCP send messages sent to a destination. Which what's going to end up happening is that the server is going to keep all of those sessions in memory, waiting to complete a two-way handshake with the attacker, which never happens, which up to a point, because the server doesn't, it, it, the, the server was, uh, let's say, uh, implemented and scaled to sustain a certain number of TCP sessions. So once the attacker hits that level, like if the server was scaled to allow for a thousand concurrent sessions, if the attacker sends 2,000 TCP SYN packets and can send those instantly, they're going to instantly, uh, they're going to instantly, uh, the server is going to instantly receive more sessions than it can concurrently sustain. So that can cause unexpected behaviors again on the system, which can crash or it can stop functioning. But what's most important is like legitimate new user requests can no longer be performed. So like if the attacker sends, as I was saying, let's say 2,000 TCP SYN packets concurrently, and the server can actually sustain only 1,000 of those, it means that when me, Christian, from TestPCA, when I'm going to try to send a valid, so a valid request to the server asking for specific information, the server can no longer reply to my request because the server has reached its its maximum number of sessions that it can sustain for that service. So this is no longer going to work. So this is a denial of service against that a service which was running on the server by using a TCP SYN flood attack. Now I say that nowadays this 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 attacks are less common because we have a lot of uh, options to put countermeasures to put in the network and defend against these types of attacks. What is most commonly seen nowadays is going to be what is called distributed denial of service. Which in the case of distributed uh, denial of service, it's always the attack is sourced from large number of sources, which in general are botnets. So what that means is we're gonna, I'm going to take you, I'm going to also take you to, to those uh, URLs in there in a couple. But for example, what happens is if this is, let's say, let me put in here the internet. Let's say new blank page. So let's say this is in here. Th this is the, the network I want to attack. The attacked network, attacked network. The victim, let's say. And I want to attack a specific PC or device, PC. So that's the victim network. And then we have in here the attacker. What the attacker is going to do, it is going to install malicious code on different endpoints connected to the internet. So those are going to be devices connected to the internet which got infected and they have malicious code running. So endpoint 1, endpoint 2, endpoint 3, endpoint 4, endpoint 5, Endpoint six. So the attacker has installed malicious code on all of those endpoints, which are going to allow the attacker that at specific at a specific time, the attacker can send what is called a command to their end to those infected endpoints. It's going to send a specific set of commands or instructions to the infected endpoints which is going to ask the endpoints, which is going to configure the endpoints to attack the victim 
So as a, as a result of the attacker sending some some commands uh, to to the to the infected endpoints that the attacker controls, then the endpoints are going to result are going to end up launching an attack to the victim at the same time. So all endpoints which got infected are going to end up initiating some kind of malicious traffic towards the victim. So this says in here malicious traffic malicious traffic. So this is one use case how the attackers can actually initiate, successfully deploy a distributed denial of service by owning endpoints connected to the internet, infecting the infecting those endpoints, and then controlling those endpoints so that the attacker can launch a attack from all of those endpoints at the same time towards a specific victim. But now the use cases I'm I'm going to show you here in a couple. If we speak about our service, distributed denial service of attacks, are going to show us another way of performing the attack. So in this use case, when endpoints connected to the internet are infected and used in order to launch attacks to a victim, those infected endpoints are called botnets. Because those endpoints run a specific piece of software which allows an attacker to control their behavior and what they do. But for example, if you look at those um, examples in there, let's click on the first one. So it says the DDoS that almost broke the internet. It is from 2013. So at that time, the, the attack, if you look it up in here, was based, was the attack level was 80 gigs of traffic destined to a victim. So at that point in 2013, that was a huge amount of data being sent towards a victim, 85 gigs of traffic. Now, if you read about it on how this worked, Let's give it a couple of seconds in here to read about it. Uh, let's see on how, what was the base of this attack. Uh, let's click on this uh, where the attack was described to see what, how, how this attack managed to happen. So it states that this attack was done based on what we call DNS reflection. We're going to speak about reflection attacks in a couple. So the attack was successful as a result of, of a DNS reflection attack which ended up in a high bandwidth of service attack of 75 gigs or 90 gigs. So we, we have sp been speaking so far about denial of service attacks which cause a system interruption or a network device or an endpoint. So then how can this traffic, because it's only high bandwidth, how can this, uh, how can this be a denial of service? It's very simple. So this is a bandwidth, is a v this is very common nowadays and it's, it's, like bas it's based on bandwidth uh, overloading. So like if if they looking at our diagram in here, if this is my internet access in here, again with LAN and WAN, LAN and WAN, LAN, LAN and internet, and my contract that internet rate is let's say 20 megabits per second or 100 megabits per second. If the attacker, which this means that my network and my link between me and the provider is going to allow only by direction of 100 megabits per second. So this means that my internet service provider is going to allow back and forth 100 megabits per second, but not more than that. So what this means is that if the attackers, 
if the attackers can send towards my network traffic which is much more than 100 megs per second which like it's, it was in this case about 90 gigs per second not only I'm gonna overload the bandwidth provided but also my network devices at the edge are not gonna be capable to route back and forward 90 gigs per second so at that point it's total service unavailability from the internet point of view because at that point if at the ingress of my network from the internet I receive 90 gigs of traffic then very very few uh, you know portion of that traffic is going to be legitimate otherwise most is going to be from the attack sources and at the same time my network ed edge devices like my network my edge files my edge routers are probably not going to be able to sustain that amount of traffic and basically crash go to high cpu so it's a it's going to this is going to be like a a, a bad not distributed denial of service which results in total darkness from the internet point of view so at this point all of my services which are reachable from the internet are no longer going to be reachable is that simple the inside of the, of the network is not affected so my users can still work in the, in, in the inside do their jobs perform their operations but nobody is going to be able to access my publicly available resources from the internet, internet anymore at this point